honeycombing quick practical approach. Honeycombing is uh, the criteria of typical UIP. As we know that UIP are four patterns, but honeycombing is present only in the typical UIP. In presence of typical UIP, due to presence of the honeycombing, so in reporting, it can be enough to mention that we have typical UIP pattern and at that time, there will be a workup to see that patient having IPF, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, UIP, or this is non-IPF UIP pattern. But from your side as a radiologist, you have to make some effort to help the physician to reach the diagnosis of either IPF or non-IPF UIP in case you have the typical pattern of UIP presenting with significant honeycombing. There are some helpful features that can make you suggest that this typical pattern is secondary to connective tissue disease, or there are features to make the typical UIP pattern of non-IPF alternative diagnosis. And by exclusion, you can reach the diagnosis of IPF UIP pattern. The criteria of UIP for IPF is the presence of honeycombing and other fibrotic features like direction bronchiectasis, bronchiectasis seen only subplural with no bronchocentric distribution, absence of fibrosis of gum glass or reticulation or traction bronchiectasis in bronchocentric distribution as in this image with epico basal gradient increasing of fibrosis and honeycombing from upward to downward. This is called epico basal gradient. Here another example showing that the abnormality of honeycombing is confined to the periphery with no evidence of bronchocentric bronchiectic traction bronchiectasis or ground glass or regular reticulation. As UIP and NSIP both belongs to the chronic fibrosing interstitial pneumonia, always there is comparison between them. Here in UIP, there is obvious basal gradient with heterogeneity of the findings. Honeycombing is the main feature of the UIP and traction bronchiectasis. Here we can appreciate the basal gradient of the findings, honeycombing increasing from A image to B image to C, then D, which is sh showing the maximum extent of the presence of the honeycombing. Features that you can find and suggest that this typical UIP pattern is secondary to connective tissue disease, we have four signs. Anterior upper loop sign that the honeycombing is present anteriorly 
in the upper loops, as you see here in this Excel, cut and confirmed in the sagittal, the presence of honeycombing in the anterior portion of the upper loops. This is called anterior upper loop sign. Again, this is another example showing the anterior upper loop sign. Other feature suggesting secondary UIP to connective tissue disease is the presence of the four corner sign. Here, the honeycombing and fibrosis occupying the anterior portion of the upper loops and the superior segments of the lower loops. This is called four corner sign. How this sign is suggestive for second UIP because the UIP for IPF, the honeycombing is seen on the lateral costal margins. But in case of the anterior upper loop sign, the honeycombing is seen anteriorly and not along the costal margin. The sign number three is the exuberant honeycombing sign, which means that the honeycombing is the most significant fibrotic finding in the patient and represents more than 70% of the fibrotic features. As we see here in the lung bases, exuberant honeycombing is there Another examples of exuberant honeycombing. Honeycombing represent more, much more of the features of fibrosis compared to the traction bronchiaxis and irregular reticulation. Here again, you see the significant difference between the extent of the honeycombing compared to the other features of fibrosis of traction bronchiectasis and irregular articulation compared to the amount of honeycombing in the patient. How is this sign suggest that it's secondary? Because in the IPFUIP, the honeycombing is significant and is the dominating feature, but not to that extent that shown in the exuberant honeycombing sign. Here, you can appreciate presence of variable traction bronchiaxis, irregular articulation, and the honeycombing is more in amount and extent compared to these features, but more or less, there is balance in the presence of the fibrotic findings. But here, almost the findings is honeycombing alone. The straight edge sign, which is the sign number four, that the honeycombing is confined to the lower loops only. No extension along the costal or pleural surfaces to the upper lobes, only confined to the lower lobe, and there is sharp demarcation between the honeycombing and the adjacent normal lung. As you see here in these two examples, the honeycombing confined to the lower lobes, and there is sharp demarcation between the honeycombing and the adjacent lung. This is another example showing the sharp demarcation and how it is confined to the lower loops only. In IPFUIP, there is extension of the honeycombing to the upper loops with epicobasal gradient. These are the fine designs again. The anterior upper lobe sign, four corner sign, 
straight edge sign and exuberant honeycombing sign, which suggests that the UIP pattern is secondary, most likely it's secondary to connective tissue disease. This connective tissue disease, rheumatoid arthritis comes in the top of this a group of connective tissue disease that have tendency to present by UIP. The other connective tissue disease like scleroderma, systemic lupus erythematosus, Jacquerins has tendency to present by non-specific interstitial pneumonia. What if we have typically IP pattern with features suggesting non-IPF like hypersensitivity unites fibrotic type? If we can find lobular air trapping within the upper lobes, this is a feature of fibrotic hypersensitivity unites and air trapping is allowed to be seen in IPF, UIP, in the lower lobes only, not within the upper lobes. Here, another features of distribution that suggest that the typical UIP pattern is non-IPF, presence of the bronchocentric distribution of the direction bronchiaxis, as we can appreciate here, spared, relatively spared lung bases. And this is not a bicobasal gradient that we expect to see in the typical UIP for IPF. Here, again, this is the bronchocentric distribution along the bronchovascular bundles. Here is the this patient. In D, this is the coronal, and here in the axial E, at the level of the pulmonary arteries, we see that there is bronchocentric distribution with presence of traction bronchiaxis, irregular reticulation, and ground glass along the bronchocentric distribution. Here, another example, we have this patient showing extensive honeycombing upward within the upper lobes. Then when we go downward, the honeycombing is reducing and this is not a bicobasal gradient and there is bronchocentric distribution of the fibrosis, traction bronchiaxis, irregular reticulation, and ground glass, and presence of air trapping here. Yeah, the air trapping is confined to the lower lobes, which is accepted in case of IPF, but the distribution is against IPF. And the distribution being more upper looper than lower looper with the presence of air trapping make the diagnosis in favor of fibrotic HP over the UIP IPF. Here, another typical UIP for alternative diagnosis in end stage sarcoidosis. As we see here, also there is predominance of the findings of fibrosis in upper loops compared to the lower loops and presence of the bronchocentricity. But the feature is that suggest that it is end stage sarcoidosis rather than fibrotic HP, that the continuity of the fibrosis 
from central to peripheral. This continuity is characteristic for sarcoidosis, plus the presence of consolidation. And this is the pattern of the fibrotic masses that comes in end-stage sarcoidosis. Here, another example of involvement of the central and peripheral and with continuity of fibrotic changes in honeycombing here on the right side and here also on the left side it's less in extent but it's representing bronchocentric distribution from the hyla and in continuity to the peripheral subplural location this is characteristic for end-stage sarcoidosis in the presence of consolidation as well. Here, the dominating feature is traction from KXs. I am showing you these different examples for the end-stage fibrosis of sarcoidosis because this is characteristic once you see this continuity of fibrosis from the hyla reaching the subplural aspect of the lung this is characteristic for sarcoidosis end stage with fibrosis another example here but the dominating abnormality is the traction bronchiectasis. Here are different patterns of end-stage sarcoidosis, fibrosis. As you see here, there is like lung scarring centrally located with extension of regular, regular articulation to the periphery. Here, more extent extensive fibrosis with traction bronchiaxis with irregular articulation here you can appreciate the continuity again we saw this image before and here is the progressive massive fibrosis similar to complicated silicosis with fibrosis see in this pattern silicosis complicated silicosis is a differential diagnosis but the other patterns are characteristic for end-stage sarcoidosis with no differential diagnosis. In case of asbestosis, it shows here a single layer of stacked thick wall cysts stacked to, along the pleural surface with the presence of the pleural calcific pleural plaques. So this render this UIP pattern is for alternative diagnosis, which is asbestosis. Here, another example showing honeycombing along the lung bases, subplurally located, but presence of calcific pleural plaques make the diagnosis asbestosis. And that's it. Thanks.